Processing Approaches to Second Language Learning Processing Approaches to Second Language Learning are interested in finding out how is the information related to second language is stored in the brain and how is that information processed and put to use by the learners. So they are basically interested in the minds or the brain's processing mechanisms that allow the learners to, uh, to learn and then use second language. Within the processing approaches, they are again two more or the sub approaches. One A we will say is information processing approach and number two is the processability theory or process, processability approach. Information processing approach within the wider um, approach of the processing um, approaches is actually interested in investigating how different memory stores within the mind store the information of second language that comes to the learners and how do the learners deal with it. They are also interested in knowing how is this information automatized or by automatization we mean how after learning the language, paying attention to its specific aspects, that learning becomes so automatized or so embedded in the mind that the learners when they use the second language, they do not have to think about the grammar or the structure of the language at all, but just focus on the meaning. So they are interested in knowing how conscious learning becomes so subconscious and so automatized that the, learn, the, that the learners um, are able to use the language to serve their uh, needs. So information processing theory for this specific purpose differentiates between long-term memory and short-term memory. The long-term memory is the memory in which the, um, uh, the structures that have been moved from the short-term memory and where the learning has become uh, almost automatized. Short-term memory is the memory where the, the learners are actually actively processing the information and consciously trying to apply it. Once they become experts in this use, the knowledge structure is actually then moved on to uh, long-term memory and this frees up the space in the short-term memory for learning new items from the uh, second language. Information processing theory also differentiates between declarative knowledge and procedural knowledge. Declarative knowledge would be the rules of the language itself and how the structure or how the uh, structure of a, of a good sentence might be or an utterance might be, while the procedural knowledge would mean that how to use that knowledge. For instance, to give you an example, declarative knowledge would mean that by adding ed, uh, we can change one word to a, a, a one verb to a past tense to a, in most of the cases, uh, although there are exceptions. However, uh, the procedural knowledge will be actually use of that knowledge in, um, in real circumstances. Processability theory, on the other hand, looks at the processing demands made by second language structures. They try to find out which type of structures in the language will be more complex for the learner to learn and which type of um, uh, structures within the second language 
will be comparatively easier for the learners to learn. And somehow, because of that, processability theory has more implications for learnability, how a language is learned, and also the teaching of the second language, because it is directly related to the, uh, to the spots in the second language, which might be more difficult, and uh, play spots in the second uh, language, which might be easier to learn. In that way, it directly relates to uh, teaching and learning environment in the classrooms.